there's no doubt not all but many in the xbox community are going through the infamous five stages of grief you know denial anger bargaining depression and finally acceptance now i think the bigger debate was for those of us watching this from the outskirts was figuring out what stages they were in at a particular time now i do hate demagoguing or speaking of groups as a monolith however the core xbox community on social media have been very hive minded to say the least particularly spinning creators who decided to ignore the inevitable wall writings to instead live off the continuous driblet of fanboy red meat xbox would throw their way here and there they did this despite the legitimacy of the info cascading and potential backblow they just simply enjoy living off the rabid moments they induced and therefore cleaning up and click super chat and so forth thereafter now they're hitting a new tune amidst xbox funneling no more fanboy hype the ugly truth has emerged and there is no competitive spirit anymore for Microsoft. Just same said creators left scrambling to now tell you the truth. Is this some last stitch effort to save their channels or have they truly had a good faith epiphany and want to do right by the viewer? Well, we tackle all this on the next installment of The Spill, our gaming hot topic video series. Buckle up and get ready for a good one. Let's go. Yeah. Uh -huh. What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K of Hard Knock Digital Culture, Cloud Dosage, and MM2K Gaming. Back again with another episode of The Spill. Today's video I would like to call Xbox Community Struggle to Find a New Identity. But before we get into all that, do us a huge favorite that like button hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications please so you know when we are dropping these doses all right so in order to help you understand this struggle and you as the gamer how to best navigate through this struggle and, and when i say you I, I i am gearing this video towards mainly the xbox community member who wanted to fight the good fight for xbox in regards to the competitive nature that they you know bestowed because you guys know just as much as i do it's not about hating or fanboying when it comes to being competitive still sharp and still look we got an era with the xbox 360 playstation 3 era which i think over the last few generations was the best era in gaming it was so it was so phenomenal that now we're just seeing regurgitations of games that were created back in that era we haven't really seen any real innovative genres come out of these eras since then except for maybe one like like the battle royale thing but all the other game types and styles and the big titles and ips that we cherish today they're a derogative of of games that started in the playstation 3 xbox 360 era that's how great that era was it's it's kept the triple a genre defining market intact for over two or three generations that said it was the competition that happened during that generation that made things so great into where you know the, the ideas from all the way back then are still a staple within gaming so gamers know like look if you want continued innovation you want your mind to continue to be blown technology to, to, to go into new directions there has to be competition driving that there has to be a variety of ideas that are attempted and many will fail that but finally we'll, we'll you know we'll have various options to pick from to help bolster gaming into the next stratosphere when you don't have said innovation and you don't have said competition you don't have various options to pick from in in deciding um how uh um big xboxes or or playstation's creative footprint will be in the future like for instance we talk about now some of the things that playstation may not be doing you know because they don't have any competition right so a lot of us that wanted xbox whether you were a fan of xbox or not a lot of us that wanted xbox to continue to be uh competitive was it about you know fanboying or this that or the other it was because of the old adage still sharp and still that being said i want to have this conversation mainly with 
the Xbox people. Anybody's free to listen as always, but this conversation is for them because I can relate to you. I started making YouTube content because I was in the same mind state that you were in at one point in time. Just that I kind of saw what was going on a little bit earlier. Um, and I said, you know what? I, I, I don't want to be part of this. You know what I mean? And I would have stayed around and continued to fight the good fight, but there were too many people that were just placating to the things that were happening versus holding people's feet to the fire. And I just couldn't be part of that effort. I couldn't torture myself like that. Um, that being said, let, let, let's examine how we got here first. Okay. Um, then we're going to talk about, you know, the, these creators and whether we should look at them authentically. And then we're just going to do a self-reflection and, and talk about that in our conclusion. All right. So here was the sentiment going into this gen, right? A lot of people looked at Xbox this gen and, and saw that, you know, there was a collapse uh, last generation with the Xbox one, but they were very optimistic with this one because they, they, they thought it was a reboot. They looked at it as a reboot. They said, okay, the Xbox OG, you know, got walled by the PlayStation 2, but by the time the PlayStation 3 came about, they, they really, you know, they really competed they really brought some great stuff and they really angled Xbox in, in, in a fantastic position to really be the home staple of gaming, at least in the US, right? And they thought that the Xbox One generation was kind of screwed up by Donnie, Donnie D. Phil was coming in to save it, Phil and Satya, and they just had to do another reboot and they would just replicate what would happen in the 360 era and some, right? That didn't happen. Um, we'll get into why that didn't happen a little bit, but it didn't happen. Uh, they also thought that, you know, this would happen because Xbox was just simply more user friendly. You know, all this stuff with Game Pass and games dropping day and day and then them seemingly waiting to raise the price of their games for a while until I think they officially started that with Redfall. They would start charging $70 for, for games. Imagine not being the game that you start charging $70. For, but I, dig I digress. Um, they felt like they had a great direction te technology-wise overall, and, you know, with cloud and everything. They were really going to push gaming into the future. And then what kind of like had everybody fooled was that the internet was on their side. Like you had all types of publications you know, attacking PlayStation, telling PlayStation from a technical technological standpoint, we don't know how you're going to keep up, you know, dogging PlayStation for being greedy and cocky and arrogant and all this other stuff. And just really making it seem like that Xbox was the one that gamers should flock to. But there was a reason behind that, but people couldn't see it because they had their green glazed glasses on, right? But the, the mixed signals were coming and they led to the veil being pulled down on this false hope. Number one, Xbox was not user-friendly. Why weren't they user-friendly? Because Xbox is a platform. And you can say all these things that you want to do as your platform, but if the people, you, as a platform and as a, as, a cons, as a platform store, you're only as good as the products that fill up that platform store. Now, your exclusives, which again, by all intents and purposes, were not great in the first place. You know, you can look at the user scores and, 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 and see that. Even in places where the media tried to grade, X, grade Xbox on the curve, users just rejected their content. But even with that, that wasn't the only problem. And, and people could argue that may have not been their most glaring problem. I think it is, but I feel like you can make an argument that maybe their most glaring problem was their support of developers. The developers did not want the Xbox Series S to exist. The, the, um, the overall production of that console created such a wide gap between that and its bigger brother, the Series X, that developers felt like they would have to, they would be developing for two consoles. You know what I mean? And they didn't want to do that. So they said, we're going to develop for the Series S and scale up, meaning we're not going to take advantage of the Series X um, capabilities. And it, they, 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 just, they just did a lot of pleading and, and, and a lot of it spilled over into the public over the Series S 
not being produced. Xbox ignored it. Xbox in turn went to the creators who then tapped into the sicko fans who attacked the developers. And now we're in a space to where third party developers behind, you know, off the record have said, why are we supporting this platform? We're seeing more and more games come to Xbox late or simply not come because of this Series S bottleneck. You know what I mean? In a Series S bottleneck, creating uh, th this thing where, you know, you, even those that buy the Series X, and some reports have like in places like the US, the Series X is not too far behind the Series S in saturation, you know, in homes. So if I bought a Series X and PlayStation has a $400 counterpart, that's playing games just as good, if not better, all the new games just as good, if not better, then, you know, I might make a trade and I might make a switch, right? Because now PlayStations are in abundance. They're not hard to find anymore. So it wasn't user friendly because you're only as good as the stuff that's in your store. You weren't making good exclusives and you didn't create a platform that was the most, that was friendliest where it needed to be with the developers, okay? Also, I mean, there's no other way to chalk it. Leadership is just incompetent towards delivering you what you want. Everything that they've promised, they've had to backtrack on in a major way. Everything, everything. The, the promise of the Series X and the Series S is so bad. They had a video detailing what, giving you promises of, of that hardware that they've had to private. We've downloaded it before they privated it and unlisted these videos. We got them. They're still here. Um, you know, we still have access to them, but that's how bad it was. That's unprecedented. I haven't, I haven't seen nothing like that. Just a general breakdown of what your hardware is going to do. You've, you've literally had to yank that video. Cloud gaming has not delivered in the way that they promised. When they, especially when they, not just at the, its original beta rollout, but when they upgraded to the Series X server blades, it was so disappointing to gamers, right? And there's just so many different elements. Like you look at every single main core of what got people excited about going into this generation about Xbox, and then it, they've had to backtrack in a major way. And lastly, it was not realizing that the internet was only being user was only being friendly towards Xbox because a you, you, you had people that wanted to become content creators themselves in grift, right? <laughs> and then secondly, more importantly, why there was a more global friendly approach to Xbox is because people love the idea that if the Xbox game pass model was successful consistently, that it would force Sony's hands and force them to do the same thing. And those are the games that they really want. They could care less about having access to the Game Pass games. Look at the saturation. But they wanted that to be successful because they wanted it, to, they wanted that necessity to trickle over to PlayStation Plus. I remember talking to David Jaffe, the creator of God of War, the infamous David Jaffe, on Twitter. And me and I'm going back and forth. And he's like, you know, at the at the reveal of the PlayStation Plus tiers, he's like, yo, this is lackluster or whatever. And I was like, well, why, Dave? Why, Jaffe? Why is it lackluster? Oh, uh, because they need to, you know, they need to mimic what Xbox is doing. I said, why would you mimic someone that's in last place? Like, they're not hitting the benchmarks for Game Pass. Like, why would they mimic Game Pass? They're not... They're not hitting their benchmarks. Sony is aware of cloud gaming's promise. You know, the potentiality of subscription services or, or, or the target demos of subscription services, but they're not gonna go all in on something that isn't proven or something that doesn't necessarily behold a lot of promise up front. So yeah, they have their, their, their cloud service and they have their subscription service, but they're not gonna go all in on it because the business is won by what the traditional console and, and marketplace uh, um, business approach. And he refuted it. But you fast forward, what, like two years from that discussion? 
which I thought it would be very easy to see. And, I, and, and, and part of me believes that Dave Jaffe agree with me. He, 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 he just wanted those PlayStation games so bad to be day and date on PlayStation Plus. That, that's what this was all about. That's what this was all about. And now these same, you know, places realize that their dreams will never come true because Xbox business model is in a state of flux right now. We, 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 we've even heard some creators say over the last few days, it's in a cocoon, right? <laughs> but then it was great pushback by other creators who said, well, how long did they've been in this cocoon since 2017? Like now's not the time for more buzz phrases and spin It's basically let's, let's hold them accountable. Right. And you're going to start seeing more and more of that. Here's what changed it off too, folks. It was the failure of 2023. Like when you had Redfall, Starfield, and uh, Forza Motorsport, it's big titles of 2023. And I told you guys that was gonna make or break all of these platforms was 2023. When you saw 2023 be as abysmal for Xbox as it was, even with Starfield, and don't get me wrong, Starfield did sell a lot in this launch time frame, just like Cyberpunk sold a lot within his launch time frame. But you but nobody would ever argue that Cyberpunk's launch was a success. It sold a lot of copies, but the long-term ramifications of all of the miscues of the launch had all this unnecessary baggage with it that didn't Cyberpunk was not a success. It was not favorable and it didn't have everybody in a good space about the game until um phantom liberty came out and then that changed everything starfield is not a success it did a lot of numbers like cyberpunk at launch but the execs and, and it came out in the court documents and so forth that the execs were very were really eyeballing to make sure that by keeping this stuff exclusive and putting it on pc um and then keeping it exclusive in game pass that they were hoping to make up the gap of a not remaining multiplat, fully, truly multiplat, and, and, and it didn't. And now you have a shattered space that released to, to horrible, a horrible reception. Things are not looking good for Starfield long-term, right? So that failure of 2023, along with the purchase of ABK and the Rocky acquisition that that was led the xbox upper brass to you know kind of like take the keys from phil spencer and say look um we with with you at helm we can't compete with xbox i mean we can't compete with playstation like this business has to be driven in a different way and then comes sarah bond who's more about you know access and you know things like that due to her mobile background with T-Mobile and so forth. That's where you start seeing Xbox do its transition and it no longer being the still sharp, sharp and still that even produced Xbox in the first place. The only reason why Xbox is around was to slow down PlayStation and stop PlayStation from taking over the living room. Xbox only existed, was only created to compete. Not, oh, competition was, you know, was part of the business. They, they were only there to thwart PlayStation. Right. So it's like now that that whole identity is gone, what next? And the reality is there still is no identity. You just have a situation where they're multi-plat. There's, you know, they're more, they're less console focused and there's no more red meat. That's what's happened in 2024. Because the, the failures of 2023 just just sealed the fate for everybody going into this year. Here's my argument when it comes to the creators. I think it was naive Tay by the community hopes that this leadership was the correct leadership to compete and that they could actually execute on the promises. Like the promises were not bad. 
the the business approach of of game pass and the series s those weren't bad ideas it was the execution of them that required leadership that had to understand what quality games is the fuel here under no circumstances should the xbox the world's most powerful console launch with the falconer under no circumstances should the series s be a bottleneck the way that it was if you can't produce a cheaper console at a significantly cheaper price without disrupting too many of the internal components that would create said bottleneck then you got to think of something else or just don't release that at all you you, you, you shot yourselves in the foot before the race even stood started so i mean that should have been air apparent but it wasn't because the leadership was porous right but because of that naivete and how rabid the xbox community was nobody cared to say hey wake up wake up wake up wake up internally and that just left the community exposed to be grifted on by people who mind you just last generation were hardcore playstation people i mean you look at last generation the beginning of last generation versus the beginning of this generation playstation is offered a thousand times more you got god of war and horizon sequels and the portal and psvr2 and you got now you got subscriptions there's so much more to the playstation ecosystem than there was last gen and these people now decide to leave playstation for xbox it doesn't make any sense except to grift right also a successful support group like if i'm part of a support group like let me give you an example one of my favorite tv shows is from right um and a lot of people try to make comparisons to from to other tv shows and say you know what from should be uh you know get a lot more recognition than these other tv shows it's better now even though i may agree with them there my infinity for the, the tv show from cannot be based upon my hate on something else and another thing that made you guys open to be used not just by content creators but by xbox themselves is that you were driven by hate of playstation you hate playstation so much that they there's no way they would become an option so really x the signal to xbox is we can't do anything wrong we could try everything we could we could try it all we can bend y'all over and, and stick it to you, no Vaseline, and eventually you'll take it because you'll never go over there. That is the worst message you can give a Fortune 500 company. You never say stuff like that to them or never give that appearance. And that led y'all to lastly not holding Xbox accountable. Only the only time you made them held them accountable is when they made the fanboy wing look bad on twitter you never made them accountable held them accountable for when they failed to meet the expectations that they set forth you always made excuses for them well you see the playstation people arguing and fussing back and forth and arguing about things all the time all the time only time you see you guys arguing is when something's done to make you look bad on twitter and that's not good so in closing and looking back i can point and talk about the, the content creators all i want i don't think they tell the full story here i mean we, cold blood and i we're going to talk about them during the live show so if you're watching this as part of the live show stay tuned because you're gonna have a hell of a show but if you're watching this as part of um an individual a la carte video just stay tuned at the end for the cards for one of the cards it'll take you to the live show we're going to talk about these creators and laugh at some of the stuff that they're saying and doing but i don't think they're the crux of the problem 
You, you listening on the other end of this, you didn't hold them accountable. When I say them, you didn't hold Xbox accountable. You didn't hold the creators accountable. Thus, you created an atmosphere based on talk but no play. Like, for instance, where were the game streams at? Where were, like, even with Stadia, I know people, oh, yeah, you're the Stadia guy. You were the guy that believed in Stadia. For God forbid that I believe in tech that there's a, have a promise of, of trying to push things forward, that it actually delivered performance wise on the things that Xbox promised and Xbox said that themselves because in the fortune magazine video when asked why won't you why, why don't you just take this thing out of beta phil spencer said out of his own mouth wait, wait, wait would you wait, would you put that in production would you go live with that meaning look at all these other cloud services ours in comparisons looks horrible so 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 forbid me <laughs> for actually going with a cloud service that you know as far as the technology was concerned uh, could deliver on its promise but even with that with, with with stadia and me working with other stadia creators we always pushed for gameplays we'd always had events we contacted the, the, the stadia employees and said hey would you guys like to be in these tournaments with us or would you guys like to highlight these tournaments i mean we think not only do we want to simply just have the tournaments and play games but we think it would be a great marketing thing for you guys to show people that hey you can play fighters with no lag and play PUBG. you know what i'm saying cross uh play with other people we can kick their butts all over you know regardless of what platform you're on we can't kick butt on destiny and stuff we were playing games to show people how cool stadia was there's none of that and we were trying to do that from like a lowly one percent cloud platform that gamers were just skeptical of anyway but this is xbox we're talking about they went up against the mighty playstation they didn't have those challenges all people had to do was show how cool it was and they refused to do it all they wanted to do was talk about it where was the game streams and that's why i'm not mad at the playstation people when they ask for people's gamer score my gamer score is trash because i don't because i don't gamer score hunt but I respect them for asking. They want accountability. Are you playing these games? Because you could be. In the Xbox community, I, I, I feel as a unison, when you look at their creators, you see less let's plays and stuff like that being broadcasted amongst all of the game communities. I'm sorry. Just the truth. Instead of accountability, you idolize people just cozying up to execs, getting flown out, getting free previews, all the while you were getting nothing in return. Your worst elements, hear me out, your worst elements of being a sicko fan. We gotta have that coming to Jesus moment now. Again, your worst moments of being a sicko fan came back to bite you. And that sicko fan mindset just simply is no longer valued at Xbox because of the things that we talked about earlier. So again, I think the bigger question isn't, are the creators authentic? Because look, a dog is gonna bark, all right? Is, grifters are gonna grift, <laughs> okay? You just through naive tag was caught up in it. I think the bigger question is, how important is it to you that the voices around you be authentic versus you simply trying to find somewhere you can belong? That's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I have to say, check out the links below to follow me. They will lead you to Hard Knock Digital Culture, cloud dosage and in an mm2k gaming with all that said peace you guys and gals have a wonderful wonderful gaming day